the problem, Bitcoin is not at the moment, at least a very convenient money. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, there isn't a cheap and easy way of making transactions with it, uh, small transactions. And it, and I think that's true of Ether. I haven't really paid attention to all of the different, different cryptocurrencies that are out there and some of them may have done better. Also, uh, one of the things you would like to have with an eCash is anonymity. And Bitcoin, in some sense, is the least anonymous currency that has ever existed, because every transaction is public information to everybody who's using Bitcoin. Now, on the other hand, what public information is the transaction between accounts, not between people. And I gather there are various mechanisms uh, by which you can, at some effort, blur it so that it's hard for an observer to actually know who's paying whom what. But it would certainly be much more convenient if I could make a payment for you and be reasonably sure no third party could observe it. And the kind of anonymous e-cash that I wrote about before Bitcoin, which was Chaumian digital cash based on ideas by a Dutch cryptographer, David Chaum, is one in which I send a piece of information to you the result is that a dollar held by a bank now is under your control instead of my control. I don't have to know who you are. You don't have to know who I am. And the bank doesn't have to know who either of us is. Uh, I've got in my book, Future Imperfect, I discuss a low tech way of doing it just in order to show that it's not an impossible, but Chalm's way involves much more elaborate mathematics in order to, in order to do it. Uh, and it would be nice if there were a cryptocurrency that had those features. And there have been a couple of attempts, as I understand it, doing it. And I really haven't followed that, that literature very carefully. A few years ago, I was at a conference on cryptocurrency, or blockchain or something related to that, where they let people, they let participants create their own sessions, as it were. And so I created a session on anonymous cryptocurrency. And the, at the time, there were two projects doing it. Uh, there was somebody from each of those projects came to, the, to that meeting. And each of them re responded that they could not make it perfectly anonymous. That is to say, now that maybe that's improved since that was several years ago, but their opinion then was that if your opponent was willing to spend unlimited resources watching what everybody was doing and figuring out who was who, they could eventually break the anonymity and figure out who you are. Uh, so that's, it's not a subject I know very much about, but, but it certainly would be, the, I mean, the ideal, I suppose the ideal cryptocurrency would be one where it was easy to make transactions, where you had a high level of privacy, uh, and where its value was predictable in the future. Uh, and that's one of the trouble with Bitcoin, of course, that Bitcoin is fine if you don't mind gambling on it. Uh, I like to say that I gave a talk a good many years ago for Porkfest, the Free State uh, Project's New Hampshire summer event. All they paid me for was my expenses. And that was by a large margin, the most profitable talk I've ever given because they offered to pay me my expenses at Bitcoin and I accepted. Uh, and I think I might, given what the Bitcoin was there, I think it was roughly one Bitcoin. So that means that, that for that one talk, I got what's now something like $55,000. But that was just sort of random chance as it were. It could have also gotten zero if it had gone the other way. Uh, so in any case, uh, but it but it doesn't make a very if you're thinking not of of speculative investments, but of a safe place to put your money, or if you're saying I need a bunch of money for transactions and I don't want to have my total value randomly go up or down by fifty percent, uh, then uh, Bitcoin is not really really very good for that. Um, I've actually got on my blog uh, some years ago my own scheme for how you would make one with stable money, and there have been other attempts at stable coins. And again, I'm sort of, I like thinking about these things, but I'm not really interested enough to have followed the detailed math of the, the different different versions that are there. But, but uh, my stable coin was one in which you had, I should say the nice thing about Bitcoin, unlike Xiaomi and digital cash, is it doesn't require an issuer. That the trouble with Xiaomi and digital cash, the reason it never happened, is that you need to have a bank, which is issuing the money and is sufficiently reliable so that people trust it. And to be sufficiently reliable, people have trusted it probably has to be in some reasonably respectable country in some place like Switzerland or the US or Israel or whatever. But all, the governments of all of those countries don't want anonymous digital cash 
or anonymous cash at all is what anonymous e-cash. Because once there is a, a really anonymous e-cash, now all money laundering laws become unenforceable. And that's both a good and a bad thing. That is, I should say, I've generally said that, that the things I want, the institutions I want are not unambiguous goods. So if you had anonymous e-cash, whether crypto or not crypto, that means that kidnapping becomes a much easier project because one of the real risks if you're a kidnapper is that you'll be caught catching a delivering, cap, collecting the money. Well, that's not a problem anymore. So there are other ways of protecting against kidnapping, but that one way gets weaker. Uh, similarly, ransomware is easier with Bitcoins than it would be with dollars because you can't easily trace if people go to some trouble at least to conceal which account it is, which account is which person, you can't easily trace it. Uh, so I've got an old, old piece called A World of Strong Privacy, in which I'm looking at the implications of public key encryption if you have a society where it's fully implemented, uh, which means that anybody can have a conversation with anybody that no, no third party can, can overhear. Anybody can prove all, with, at a distance who he is if he wants to. And anybody can make payments to anybody that no third party can observe. And I describe in the old, it's on my webpage if people are curious. My webpage, you might put that up too, is uh, daviddfriedman.com. So it's easy to remember. D is my middle initial. If I'd applied for the, for the URL six months earlier, I could have gotten it without the D, but someone else beat me to it. Uh, <clears throat> so in any case, the uh, <clears throat> what, what I was, we're saying is, is that a world of strong privacy would have attractive and unattractive features. On the whole, I, <clears throat> since I think governments in many ways do more harm than good, uh, reducing the ability of governments to enforce their laws struck me as probably a net gain, but some of the laws they want to enforce are laws I'm in favor of enforcing, like laws against kidnapping and extortion and such, and those are gonna become harder to enforce too, unfortunately. 